Today is March 28th. Savvy's hurt. Burrito's perfect. The Yankees are one game away from playing games that matter. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, brought to you by Seat Geek Code John Boy Preseason. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. We got producer BBD behind the dish. The Yankees play one more tune-up game against the Nationals before the home opener this Thursday. And the roster basically set besides two competitions that kind of... All the big news has been decided. So I'm excited. Jake, are you excited? James Davis, everyone joining us, uh, and opening day, if you're not going, join us, we're live streaming, we'll be in our lounge, uh, Joe's McFly, uh, all of our people, noon to midnight, or something like that. Um, make it to midnight. Make it to midnight, our song comes out at midnight. Um, yes, we're, we're there, uh, we saw a lot of Yankee hats out in the streets today. It was very much uh, opening week of baseball, which, again, we're patenting instead of opening day. Uh, and, yeah, I I agree with you on that last bullpen spot. I, I'd love to see the last outfield spot because that should be a spot that is used, um, depending who it is. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, it, it depends how they use uh, some of the utility guys, and we, we obviously know where they where they end up with Hicksy and some of the other guys. But, uh, you know, we've, we've been on Ortega watch since that Ian Happ phone call. Um, that he could get a little juice in me flowing. But, yeah, I mean, it, since the Volpe announcement and we did, uh, we did the Volpe PPP, waited for that one, released it yesterday. Go check that out if you haven't yet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of know what we're riding with for confirmed for the first time in a while. Yeah. I mean, you can't even count the playoffs, right? (laughs) So we didn't know who we were riding with then. Yeah, there's still like a funky positional breakdown mixture. But in the outfield, the infield is exactly what we thought we were doing last year. Just change out IKF for IKF. 2022 IKF becomes Volpe, starting shortstop. Majority of reps at shortstop. And 2022 Marwin becomes IKF, utility guy. And I think Oswaldo is going to primarily be an outfielder the way Boone has been talking about him and the way they've been using him. I think he's going to be starting more games than any Hicks, Ortega, Florial as there with IKF being the utility guy. It might change depending on who wins out. But when Booney was talking to us about, you know, guys who can play center field uh, while Judge gets off, he mentioned IKF and Oswaldo. He didn't mention the fucking center fielders. Right. That have played MLB center field, Florial and uh, Ortega. So I think that's kind of how they're viewing that spot. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that last spot is Florial because they can't move him. Right. I think they're definitely trying to trade him for anything right now. And if they have to keep him on the roster for the first two weeks, thinking then they can still move him and he's a defensive replacement and stealer, of bases late. Like, I think that position might not matter if it's Florial. But if it's Ortega, then maybe they use him differently. I don't know. Right. I mean, they wouldn't use Ortega's name now because they still, him, Willie Calhoun, uh, are on, are not on the roster. Um, so, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if something happens there. That would be a little plot twist. I mean, Willie Calhoun has raked um, all spring, but it, defensively, that's not his prowess, that he feels like the perfect... If he's willing to go for a AAA assignment and when the Yankees will need him for a three-week stretch this year, 
that's a guy that if his stick could get hot for a couple weeks, and hey, you, you never know after that. You, you memories of that fun 2018 season. Um, and the other wild card there is, <laughs> will there be something? Will there be a Jose Trevino? Will there be a Mike Talkman? Uh, and Booney said that they're, and they have to say it, but it's also smart business that to keep their eyes open for any other roster crunch situations that are going down. So uh, we still may have a little bit of roster news coming, but otherwise we're all around it. And yeah, I, I've kind of been on that as well. going to play a lot of outfield train just because, well, the whole eight infielder situation. Yeah. Um, and again, that, that dive and catch in center field changed me. That wasn't a regular dive and catch. That was a, a guy making a really good play. Um, and especially with Bader out and knowing they won't, won't they don't love keeping Judge running every day in center field. Um, I would love if Oswaldo's out there, I think game two in center field, um, if Judge does game one in center, and then if Judge moves to right. But the way um, Boone talked to us, I think Judge is the center starting center fielder until Bader's back. I'm interested to see, right? Um, especially you get the off day after opening day, so you don't have to technically worry about rest stuff there. But we know that, especially during the year, and Booney talked to, talk to us. Just a reminder, Booney talked to us. Um, Booney talked to us. He's going to keep talking to us. He's going to keep talking to us every yeah, week. All right, all right. Um, that, uh, yeah, man, we, we know they plan out their rest the first couple weeks. We know... Um, it's, it's one of the few times he really wants to take care of Judgy and a lot of the guys because, um, you know, you're coming out of spring training where you're literally, <laughs> you play like two full games. Like, this national game is going to be a couple of the guys, you know, like really first full game. So, um, interested to see how they juggle it. Same. And the Bader coming back in three weeks is like doesn't go along with whatever he, that injury and the results of that injury, but that is what he told us when he talked to us, or he kind of said that time frame. So that kind of caught my ear when I listened back to the episode with us as well. Because that's too quick, it feels like, for that injury. But have to see that as well. But I do think like Judge is going to get majority reps. Because if you were trying to give someone majority reps in center field, you'd look towards, I think, Ortega or Hicksy or um, Bud Judge did it last year. They're not scared of that. Yeah, I, I mean, they'll do it. They'll do it when they need to, and we know they want to get Stanton out there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, would would love, would love to see some of them. You want to talk about Savvy getting hurt? We should talk about Luis Severino. Um if you don't know, uh, Luis Severino uh, left his uh, last spring training start a little, little early, slightly early, um, and then we got news that there was an injury, and then we got the announcement of the injury that uh, it was a lat again. It was a different spot in the lat, I, I believe, if I'm getting that right. Uh, not, not a doctor yet. Um, and, yeah, uh, you know, Obviously not the news you want going into the season, but um, if there's any hope, like you mentioned with Bader and Rodon and how the Yankees do handle the early part of the season, um, it seems like they've been extra precautious with anyone and good, but with Severino's recent in recent injury history, past four years of injury history, um, it's definitely not the, the right foot you hope to get off of. Um, but, you know, they... Uh, all the quotes and everything that came out after that are, are everything you expect. But a bummer for Seve, a bummer for the Yanks is their, you know, <laughs> top rotation we, we may have seen as a Yankees team in the past however many years has <laughs> is coming in looking a little different with uh, Domingo, Clark, and Brito. You seem like it's not a big deal? You th- uh we don't know. I mean, when, when we hopped on the mic with the Rodon episode, one of the first things we said was Tommy John, and, you know, he's, he's now throwing, and, um, you know, they, they came out with all the quotes that it was as precautionary as it could be. Bader, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. And you hope Seve's in the same bucket, but, um, you know, I, I think we're still waiting for the next update, and we're waiting. I think he's going to throw. They were going to wait for him to throw this week or something like that. How long did he miss with the lat first time? Well, it was last year, so well, was two sixty months. datum. Yeah, it's a per, per, overprotective sixty day, but it was well, maybe they're day. right. <laughs> they might have been right. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, it's tough. I don't think Savvy's part of like the season in my brain right now. Whoa. I mean, dude hasn't pitched since 1924 <laughs> years. Like, I can't, we can't sit here and say he's going to be back and he's going to be part of the rotation in the postseason. Just hasn't happened. <laughs> Technically, that's happened. Well, Technically that happened. Technically, that's happened every year. <laughs> no, he went to the bullpen a couple times and and can't get make more than four innings. Like last year was the first year he was built up in the postseason. Yeah, yeah, he started 19 games last year, uh, and the other years since 2018, um, they brought him back I mean, for the he, postseason. Since he signed that deal, he's been throwing 120 innings or something. The Hicks and Sevy extensions. And those are like all the <sighs> last year. <laughs> Rotation's absolute mess. The guys that are stepping up for it have been pitching well, like John, uh, Johnny Burrito going uh, 5.1 innings perfect against the Blue Jays. Good timing. After he finds out he's good the fifth up. starter. It is really funny and good and just like great timing. Uh, he's kind of fun to watch pitch, but yeah, I mean, starting pitching... I hope someone works out in left field because right now the Yanks are going into the season with the same trade deadline needs as Mm. last year. A left fielder and a top starting pitcher. So biggest difference is Volpe. Volpe, Oswaldo could quench some things about our left field situation by the time. But by the time. He was there after the deadline. Uh, last year. Right, but we didn't even know he played outfield. Yeah, <laughs> so he didn't either. But I don't think he was good in left field. I think he was good in right field. He's, he's a little bit of a plot twist. Um, that that kid could play anywhere, so I'm, I'm, let, let's see what that looks like. And uh, the spin zone for the starting pitchers, we knew Herman and Schmidt were going to pitch this year. We were pretty sure Brito was going to pitch this year. I, I've been pushing the Brito train. Uh, we're going to find out earlier than we thought. But if any, if Brito or her... Excuse me. If Brito or Clark end up performing at some level, those guys then are a valuable trade asset or an asset for the Yankees' future. I mean, yeah, but I think you you've kind of learned don't trade pitching. Well, uh, then there's your win. I mean, you could have a 25 year old or a 27 year old guy that's now going to be in the rotation for the upcoming years, or if everybody comes back, which you know we've got Rodon throwing. And Rodon uh, looks like he's going to come back in May or mid-May, uh, according to the timelines they've been saying about. Yeah, assuming uh, a little extra like, you protection know, He's throwing on once him. a week right now, and then once he starts going, it's a month before he would be ready to join the bigs, what they're saying. So I think we're like six weeks yeah. out. And, he's, that's like and he's staying behind in Tampa yeah. while the team yeah. is in D.C. right now. And if... You know, if you just pay 162 million for a new prize piece, you're you're gonna go that <laughs> you're gonna wait that extra extra little bit. And you know, we we know the Yankees try to build it up for the postseason, so they're they treat April completely differently than a lot of teams. Which I, I think end of the day, net net, first one of those of the year, uh, it's the right way to go about it. So um, yeah, I, I mean, let's let's see where Rodon. Uh, and the next Sevy updates are. Um, I think Rodon's going to be back. I think Sevy's going to be back at some point. I mean, he he did come back from the lat thing uh, eventually last I year. I think he's going to be part of the team again. I just don't think okay. you can count him as like... It's hard to bank on it. Bank on him. Yeah, you don't... You, you kind of don't know when. I mean, he, you know, he did give the team 102 innings last year. So, um, you know... And he was great, but then he got injured and... That injury is happening early. Maybe it's a blessing. It's that's the spin. Early. That's that's what they were saying. I mean, they, he was going to be on a little bit of a pitch count, probably like a buck forty innings this year. So maybe we're just getting that out of the way. And Clark Clark finally gets the opportunity he's been waiting now three years for. Um, and Johnny Brito, who hey, you know, there's been a lot of Yankee chatter about the arms that we've traded away. The JP Sears, um, who's the guy in the cut? Wesneski. Um, there's another one too. Who's the other lefty? It's Wes Neski, Sears, Crook. and no, that we've traded. Oh, that away. we traded. Sorry, Waldachuk. Waldachuk. Um, Brito's the one they kept, right? Like who? We we don't know how those trade talks went down. That may, was Brito just the guy that survived and he's here. I don't know. Is Brito the guy they believe in? Maybe. Um, 
And again, like you talked about, he kind of is fun. I mean, fastball mid nineties, power change up off of that. Um, we've we've heard some good things about him from some of our quote unquote inside sources. That yeah, I I mean there there's a world where it's an optimistic spin zone. There's a world that we're an injury and a bad performance away from being like, holy crap! Actually, who's gonna we got to we got to get back to the drawing board asap. What have we heard about Brito from? What, people have played against him in the minors? Well, I, th- I think we can reveal it at this point. Uh, K-Mac, Kyle McDonald, who, who does a lot of the blitzball stuff with us, go check, go check those out. Um, he was a Yankees minor leaguer, and he played with Volpe. He played with Brito. He played with a lot of these guys. Um, that He was one of the first guys that gave the scouting report, like, Brito's something about him, man. He's, you just kind of can't touch him. And I, from that scouting report, I, I thought Brito threw like 91 uh, Brito throws mid nineties. Um, so I, I don't know. He's got a chance, um, that, you know, we, we've been, when you've been looking at kind of the future of the Yankee pitching staff and who's going to be around, you know, uh, moving on from Monty, you'd, you'd like to think that the Yankees had some hope for some of their young pitchers and, and maybe Brito's that guy. You'd like to see it. I mean, the reality is three of the, when we were saying best rotation in baseball is Three of the five are not starting the season. One is, one is fully counted out. One missing first month should be okay. And then Sevy, we'll see where he comes see back. See where he is on he that is when he comes scale. Back and all that. But, yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest. Not ideal. Doesn't and then, like, you're <laughs> and one, one the more injury away have. from, like, nothing. Yeah. Nestor, I'm not worried about, but he has this hamstring thing that <laughs> that exists. I think I think his last outing in him, spring was pretty good too. I think he was like four shutouts. So yeah, I think but what, what's there. what's after Brito depth wise? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're doing funky bullpen stuff, and you're navigating the early off days, um, which I don't know, yeah. not ideal. We've 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 heard the Matt Crook stuff that yeah, you're we are we are now one more injury away. Randy Vasquez, Davey. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're at our eighth starter. Yes. We're at our eighth starter and Hey, maybe we're going to look back in September and say, wow, you know, remember those days and Clark kind of panned out or burrito had a nice, nice couple of performances. He ended up in a trade for this, that, or the other. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's why, you it's why you go eight starters deep. I'd want to, I'd be curious Next time we have Booney on to ask, like, how they plan to do the rotation. Like, are they going to use the rest days to actually give extra days, or are they going to use it to get that fifth spot as few as possible? Because if that happens and the Rodon timeline is what we think it is, then we can we can deal with three or four Brito starts. If he pounds his own, he should be able to – we can survive that. And, hell, they might be but good. He might be good. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, he said Cole's going to go every five days. So I think you, and that's what, since Cole's come over, you map out Cole every five days, sprinkle the rest around him. Like they don't really mess with his routine. And he had Rodon in an interview. He said earlier on the same thing. Like Rodon and Cole are going to get there every right. five. Um, I mean, Clark Schmidt's getting game two. Hell that's yeah. hilarious. Didn't have time to rearrange anything. So <laughs> happy yeah. for Clark. That's wild. Game two. And then Herman game three. Uh, and Nestor game four. Yeah. yeah. They, they haven't said who's going to do three and five yet, right? right? Like as far as the actual Oh, order. it could be Brito right three? Now, right now, Fangraphs has it lined up. Cole, Schmidt, Brito, Nestor, Herman. But just, just the way they are currently. The way they've been pitching? I think so. Interesting. The injuries happened at a time where it was hard to rearrange plans. Let's see. Nestor got two starts in spring and only two appearances. He's only thrown seven innings. Is he? Is he throwing today? Who's pitching today? I have it up, I think. Nope, I don't. I did have it up at one point. Nestor is today. Okay. Makes sense. Volpe in the nine hole. Yeah, which they did say, but we yeah. let's round out pitching. Brito also has pitched in four games, started his last two, was perfect his last one. Um, 13 innings pitched for Johnny Brito, 10 strikeouts, one home run, 12 hits, but no walks. So that's what you like. 
hopefully he stays there yeah. and just pounds his own. Herman started out having a good spring and then had a one or two, I forget, terrible outings. And um, Clark also kind of a rough spring. Yeah. Also hey. looked good. Those, uh, those first weeks of the season will make spring go away instantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, or, or illuminate or it, amplify it a ton. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I, I'd go check it out. We did a, what do we label the, the pitching depth episode? Was it pitching depth episode? Um, so we talked about Brito a little bit like, like this guy, I don't know. He threw 70 innings, 15 starts in AAA last year. And he had a three, three, one ERA. So it's, it's not like, you know, this isn't a Jonathan Luizga situation where it's just a guy on the 40 man from, from double A that they're making a call. Like, Hey, you, you never know what a kid is and until they call him up. But, uh, Brito's got pretty solid minor league numbers. Yeah, he, he was last year was double A and then triple A. Year before that, he dabbled in double A really quick in double A, I believe. I think like in 2021, he handful of starts at the end of the season. Eight starts there. Eight starts 21. Eight starts 22. Yeah. And then a lot of time in triple A last year where he pitched pretty well. But towards the end, they were limiting his innings or something. Or he got hurt. He's probably, we, we check it out. I'd, I'd assume he was on a little bit of a pitch count. Yeah. One, he did two, pitch three. in the Dominican League after the season. So His last six games, he only pitched an inning or two. Pitch count or getting him ready for potential... Postseason call was up he or? was he already on the forty man last year? Did they, I think they added him during the off season. I was gonna say think, get him ready yeah, for I, if that's needed. I think he was added. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe the, pitch limit. It's not that many, and then he played in the winter ball. So I wonder yeah, what that was. Ready if we needed him in the bullpen with the big club. I don't yeah, know. Johnny, Johnny. All that's right, some quality stuff out of you, Jim, wow. and. You have a quality mind, quality, quality mind. If you deal with brain fog, memory lapses, or sluggish thinking, then you should try Qualia Mind. Our sponsor, Neurohacker, combines 28 of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on earth into the ultimate brain fuel formula, Qualia Mind. And it's been changing people's lives for years now. If you're looking to stay motivated, inspiration, it's designed around the four pillars of cognition, energy, focus, memory, and drive. After only a few days, most feel more mental energy, deeper mental clarity, attention, and focus, motivation, and drive. Quality Mind is made by the world's top scientists. I like that. Go to neurohacker.com slash yanks, and you'll get $100 off. Hello. Use code YANKS at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. Okay, $100 off, 15% off your first purchase. A little bit of math there. Neurohacker.com slash YANKS. Try Qualia Mind and experience life-changing mental performance. You know there's a link in the description. Wow. You know it. So when Boone was on, I asked him if Volpe makes the team, where is he going to hit? And uh, he just said, DJ will be leading off. Yeah. He then told the the media and they announced it that Volpe on opening day, and I'm, I'm guessing for a lot of the season, is going to be the nine-hole hitter, which we talked about in his PPP. I like him there. I like the speed at the bottom of the order. I like the less pressure for the rookie guy. Um, so hopefully as the season goes, he can climb his way up a little bit. But I don't mind that at all. I kind of like it. Turn in the line, lineup over with speed. Second leadoff before uh, GJ and then Judge. And I think we have a pretty good guess at what the lineup's going to be opening day. I think, like, they've given so many hints that a lot of people are guessing the same thing on the internet. So, I guess what what's the only... What's the only pivot? It, it would be it's Hicks's Waldo in left if Judge is going to be in center. For like four Thursdays game, yeah. Which one of them is it going to be? And is it? Yeah, I mean they might be DH, DH Stanton, but I don't think the they're going to DH Stanton. No, it feels like they're going to play Stanton in right, yeah. Judge in center. 
Um, My guess is Oswaldo and left. Glaber or DJ DHs. I think, the other plays second. I think DJ will DH. Donaldson plays third. Volpe at short. Trevino. Um, Rizzo. DJ's so, a DH today. Does that change your thoughts at all on which one you think DH is Thursday? No. Yeah. Labor's bad at DH and it was good at second last year. And I, mm. I think with, with where I DJ could be this year for the Yankees and future years, I, I think the DH role suits him decently as a leadoff DH. Kind of badass. Um, but yeah, I, I guess left field is going to be the only pivot point because as well, they're supposed to be the super utility guy. And we, you know, there's the famous, they, they didn't start DJ the year they brought him in to bring, be our infield util. Um, he went on to have a great year that, I don't know, if, if they, they could still give the nod to Hixie. You'd like to feel Oswaldo, who had a pretty nice spring and has a chance to be, you know, a big part of this team going forward. You'd, you'd like to see him get the nod. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, he had the most hits uh, of any Yankee right. in spring training. He had a 340 average, a 386 on base. Again, spring training numbers. But it was a spring spring training numbers for a kid who who matters. Meanwhile, Hicks, who who said he's always bad in spring, his numbers aren't terrible. 282, 404 uh, on base. But, yeah, as Waldo not only has kind of earned it, but if you have as Waldo out there and left, you have Volpe out there, I don't know. It, it feels different. And I just think they need that energy so much. And I, whether they want to admit to it or not, if they're – you know, not going to admit to a human element and all this, which the stat geeks will, will tell you it doesn't exist. Like, it does exist. And the fact that the Yankees are foregoing service time manipulation and just starting Volpe matters and is a different vibe than we've had. This is the first time they've done this in the last six years or since, like, Talking Yanks has existed. The point where two months ago, maybe a month ago, I was still saying no way. Right. Like, no way. And then it slowly the signs started to be like more and clear, and we're like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then I realized I picked up on what they were doing, but this is the first time they've done that. So I think starting as Waldo over Hicks is, I mean, as simple as do you want a guy to get cheered at mm-hmm. the start of the game, or do you want the crowd to kind of be indifferent? I hope they don't boo before the game, but you know that they're going to. Um, so vibe-wise, it's a very easy decision. And then stats wise, kind of the same. Maybe. Um, circling up on Volpe <clears throat> in the lineup a little bit. I too like the nine hole thing. I, I think there's some, if I'm being honest, some some nice major league and slash Yankee BS. Like, okay, you're on the team, kid. Hit ninth, and and when we need to slide you up, we'll slide you up. Um, you know, Glaber's rookie year where, remember, Glaber had a really good rookie year, 271, 340, and 820 OPS. Um, he was mostly in the nine hole. Um, I think the highest he hit that year was fifth a couple games. Uh, so, you know, it, expect, or no, he, he got to, he had one game batting third um, and a couple games fourth in, in August, September. But um, he was mostly, most games in that nine slot, um, Eight and seven after that. And I, you know, Volpe's going to be down there. I feel like that 2018, you know, my my memory's not as good as I'd like. Maybe a little more quaily in mind for me. But that that's the last, when Glaber was flipping that lineup, dude, the Yankees felt badass that year. Like, it, it felt like that offense was humming. If, if Glaber did something at the bottom, like, you knew you were about to give up a crooked number. And I think Volpe is going to provide that this year. Um, and yeah, there will be a time when he's called upon and needed to to probably slide up to a six or five. But let him get his work in down there. Um, and then yeah, when when we know who he is a little more at the plate and at the dish, then we'll figure that out as it comes. But um, man, when when that works, God, Volpe in front of DJ and Judge, like that's awesome. It's that's, fun. That's baseball porn, man. Then Trevino's the eight hole hitter. How do you round out the rest of the the Order batting wise, I mean, obviously DJ lead off, Judge two, Rizzo three, Stanton four, and we like all of that. Now, are they going to go Donaldson five or Glaber five? I think after Glaber's year last year, that they would give him the five, um, and I think Donaldson would understand that. I, I know they believe in Donaldson bouncing back, and Donaldson was supposed to be kind of that five protection hitter. 
But um, yeah, you're you're gonna still with the with how this lineup is currently constructed, you're gonna have one kind of heavy meat of the lineup righty stack. I think they go Glaber, Donaldson, um, Oswaldo or Hicks. I guess um, if if I was doing it and it, it was you know MLB the Show Jake playing, um, I'd probably go Glaber, Oswaldo, Donaldson just because I like to break up the righties as much as I can, but I, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to go Donaldson five. They could. Um, they just did that like a lot last year. And if Boone thinks he's banking on him having a big year. Yeah. I think they've been doing it all spring too. So I think Donaldson's going to be the five. Um, And then I, I just worry that as Waldo is the six and Glaber's the seven, to break up the righties with Oswaldo Cabrera as the six, seven. And then you only have two lefties there, Rizzo and, uh, and Cabrera. Rizzo and Hicks or Cabrera, yeah. And Hicks and Cabrera aren't going to play a lot unless injuries happen and weird shit goes at the same time. Yeah. So this is a Yankee team with two lefties versus righty pitching. Max, more or right less. Now. I, I think earlier in the year we might see a little more as well doing Hicks than we'd expect as the season goes. But yeah, I mean that's as our starters go. Um, you know, at some point Bader's going to come back. That's another righty bat, um, and that's going to block any of the early Hicks and Oswaldo playing together. So yeah, man. As of right now, it's not. Um, and they don't have any righties on the bench. A lefties on the bench. Sorry. We'll see who wins that last job. I mean, technically, Calhoun, Ortega, or Florial will be a quote-unquote lefty off the bench. And, and I like the Matt Carpenter-style Carp- lefty, right, like a guy you're going to like pinch hit for right. to be a lefty threat at the plate. I don't think any of those guys are of that. Calhoun could potentially kind of get there, like the way he's built and what he can be as a major leaguer, but A, I don't know if he's going to break camp, and B... Yeah, he's know, not like a lefty bat off you, the bench. You would... You would pinch hit him for basically like Trevino alone. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, that's kind of how it started with Carpenter, but, you know, I, I think that role, especially with how it worked with Carpenter, because he came in, what, like early May? He got the Rangers let him go, mm-hmm. and then they tapped into him. So I I think the Yankees think if they want to bring in someone for that role, they, they can later. I have a question for you. Sure. I love questions. Can we daydream about... The lineup when Bader's back? Sure. Because where does he like slot that. in then? Does he go to the eight hole? Um, well, there's two ways to skin the cat, right? I, I think you either go eight and nine, and you try to go with a fun double flip speed thing going on up there, which I like, and that brings Trevino up to seven, which is a little higher than you probably want him, but um, that's fun. And then the alternate would be... Eight or seven, Trevino eight, which I don't know. And then, although I will say, Trevino, Judge goes to right. See, by the time Bader's back, you're hoping something gives in the infield with the with the Glaber DJ Stan. Well, or they just rotate the Glaber DJ yeah. Donaldson mix because Stan goes back to the DH most days. I think most it's going to be like a forty percent until Bader comes back. Stan will get some playing time there. I think, uh, I, I guess the one thing that kind of... How much made, does that change our offensive lineup when Bader's back it, mentally? I'm, I'm very much on a... I'm, what Harrison Bader's supposed to bring to his team, anything offensively is supposed to be a bonus. I know we all have that recent postseason like, power run in our head, and hey, if he, if he taps into that with his speed as well, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I just had a little moment where, again, what Jose Trevino is really good at is putting his bat on the ball. That if Bader's in front of Trevino, there's some good, like, hit and run, fun stuff on the bases there. Um, that, you know, if, if you're going Donaldson, Torres, Trevino. Um, What's your favorite lineup? Say Bader's Bader healthy. healthy. Bader healthy. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, if everyone was healthy right now and Volpe's a starting shortstop, what's my what's my most juiced up lineup and defense? 
Oswaldo in left, Bader in center, Judge in right, Stanton DHing. With what our current information is, the guy who would be out in our heads would Donaldson. be Josh Donaldson. Until he proves Booney right and has a huge year. And then you have DJ at third, Volpe at short, Glaber at second, Rizzo at first, Trevino behind the dish. Yeah, pretty much. The catchers are a little same, same. Man, I need Trevino. I'm worried about not having the magic of last year. Ooh, okay. No, like, um, I know what you're saying. I, we talked about it in this PPP a little bit. Uh, not Hit just Trevino. Trevino's end. part of that, but the whole team. Like, no starter got hurt. They all were pitching great. They were attacking the zone with strikes and getting results. And then it kind of flipped, and they had to get a little more strategic. But, like, the start of the season last year, everything, everything was going right. And I, I, my one concern is that uh, the, the Yankees are like, well, that, that was status quo. That was exactly how it was going to go. Then injuries in the second half. And, like, we'll just run that back. But they had some guys playing a little out of their minds in that first half. That really helped out there. Yeah, I mean, that that first month, Rizzo went went kind of nut job that first month. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, Judge ended up going. He went pole to pole. Going the full season pretty much. That, uh, yeah, I, I mean, and, and the other thing that I, I keep stumbling into is how good Holmes, King, and even Chapman for the yeah. first month and a half was really good. So, so yeah, they, they had a lot of things go right, but, you know, if I, I'm looking at the end of April numbers. Hicks, um, Hicks, April was awesome. Hicks, no power, but like a four something on base in April. I, I guess that's where I think the counter to, you know, the, the will the magic be there question, which I love. I think IKF had a good April. DJ had a solid April, but nothing special. Donaldson did not. Rizzo was great. Rizzo one dotted. He was like the hitter of the month. DJ had a pretty good April. No, it was solid. Two eighty eight, three fifty eight, seven ninety six. Like after that, he got like a second win that went until he got yeah, hurt. No pop, but two eighty eight, three fifty eight. It's a fine good. April. Yeah, it's yeah. it's we are, we are taking that. Um, Donaldson six ninety two OPS. Stanton uh, OBP under three hundred to seven twenty five OPS. Uh, Glaber. A 277 on base, a 701 OPS. Hicks, a 794 OPS. Gallo, 570. Um, IKF was 302, 333, 698 OPS. And Trevino hadn't gone at all. He was a 519. So, um, you know, it's, it's where I've, you've heard me circle back a few times now. The, the real magic of the Yankees' hot, hot start, I mean, was that pitching, man. Yeah. Um, that yeah, they're without that. But um, if you get a couple performances out of the offense um, early on, which you know, who who knows? You know, could could Stanton win Player of the Month in April? Like, yeah, he's he could be that guy. Um, you know, could Glaber have a hot month? Absolutely. So um, I don't know. You you need enough out of the pitching. You you know they're gonna have the bullpen and some of these guys in a rotation early on that. Win some games. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, they just uh, the rotation was so good early on. Yeah. And you don't have – it's just Cole and, and Nestor. Savvy's out, Tyone gone, Monty gone, and it was those five that just didn't get hurt. Made their starts. No one else made a start besides those guys. And they all had ERAs under three, three, three. Right? Cole was the wink link to start. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Savvy and Tyone def- had higher ERAs, but yeah, Cole was three after five. Maybe his next game was bad after that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they have a light. Sure they have happens. a light April schedule, and my over under on sixteen and a half. I'm still taking the high, but the the I'm worried about the staff. Being wary of the floor falling out beneath us right it could we could be doing snaps for cashman because clark brito and herman could be fantastic six seven eight starters or the sky could be falling pretty quick and you're begging for rodan savvy to come back because they already like doing four and fly five and fly first two times or something like that and then i don't know if you have the bullpen to lean on 
long, I, long length wise. Like who's they're going to lean on the bullpen early between between the off days. Who's going to get three innings in the bullpen right now? Who's that guy? I mean, did we have that guy last year? They made Lickie that guy. Yeah, Lickie was that guy. And then um, King early on. Was that King guy. was like long guy in close games. Yeah. King, yeah. King will King be multiple ridiculous. innings. Um, yeah, I... I wonder if they'll if they have a a Matt Crook or Ian Hamilton who are yet to talk about that person's probably going to get a chance to get extended, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, King King team, in April last year, thirteen innings pitched, in in six games he was doing two two plus. I think his last spring appearance he went for two again, right? Yeah. So, but he's you know right. He's valuable. He's you know. Seventh and eighth inning. I'm just saying we run into like, oh, Domingo can't get out of the the second, or the, and then Clark can't get out of third, two starts in a row, like with the same time going through the same rotation. Now the bullpen's, it's it's got to be perfect. It's scary. It's yeah. definitely scary in a, a lighter April schedule wise to be fighting a little bit uh, uh, with the rotation. You're walking a tight rope. I mean, either way, those guys are going to get their bullets in because, again, the Yankees see those first two to three weeks of April as extended spring training that, um, you know, if Domingo's Domingo or Clark or someone's struggling today, that they're, they're still going to get 70 bullets out of them. So um, you're, you're trying to build up for something more. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how they adjust for that. I mean, I, I think they're going to be willing and ready to call up your Matt Crook or Davey, or, um, you know, Web Dog. Like, we're, we're going to see the bus used early in the season, and I don't, I don't think the Yankees are, are afraid of that. The Web Dog. Web Dog. Anything else? Any other news we got or things we got to touch on? I mentioned Ian Hamilton briefly. We should probably talk about that after we talk about DraftKings because, like, this whole episode is about people. Baseball is back. In DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, new customers can place a $5 pregame Moneyline bet and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Talk about hitting it out of the park. (sighs) Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code YANKS. New customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code YANKS. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Um, your guy Hamilton, Jim. Don't know much about him. Ian Hammy. Uh, at all, to be honest. So there's a story that I think you're going to like. Well, it's it's not a fun story, but it's it's his story. Um 2019, Ian Hamilton, so that's, how many years ago is that now? Four? Um, Ian Hamilton, who's 27 now, so he would have been 23, 24. Okay. Uh, Minor league game, uh, line drive back to the face and, like, messed up his jaw. Oh. Um, That, yeah, it uh, it really derailed his career. Eight surgeries. Um, You know, pretty, pretty crazy situation. Um, and yeah, some of the quotes are bizarre and I know we were kind of laughing the other day. His, his photos are kind of intense. He's got like an intense look to him. Um, that, uh, yeah, he, he kind of went, went through the shit a little bit and he's put up a perfect spring training. (laughs) He, uh, uh, zero, zero ERA in seven games, 8.1 clean innings. Uh, and yeah, this is a guy who got called up to the White Sox when he was 23. Um, a little cup of coffee. Uh, in 2020, the COVID season, and he he had one game with the Twins last year. Uh, so classic guy the Yankees have had their eye on for five years now. Um, and where I'm assuming he's going to get the nod over Weissert, um, just because nice story. Um, but I do think if they add Ian Hamilton, the 40 man, which we haven't done some 60 day IL stuff yet, so those spots they are got, going. They got up, options there. Um, that. Ian Hamilton could get the nod and be on the Yankees. Yeah. It's kind of use him to lose him situation. A little bit. Seems like the candidate to be that Domingo couldn't escape the third guy. Looking More for, so than Weissert fits what's that his throw? role. Looking for the next Licky. Ian Hamilton from 
New Hampshire. Obviously. So, that's huge. But went to school in Washington. Wow. Just mm-hmm. hanging out in the corners? He's a corners guy. Yeah. That's how he pitches, too. You think so? He's trying to, for sure. He's fast. He's a fastball velocity guy. Okay. In 2018, that's when they have that on him. <laughs> uh, fastball slider in 2022. So... Sits 94. And, well, this is last year's numbers. Maybe he changed his stuff. What's he been doing in spring? I guess that's my question. Like, is he a one-inning guy? Uh, seven games, 8.1. So, he probably had one or two appearances. They, they stretched a little further. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, his baseball reference projection. That's a reliability number I haven't seen. What do we got? One. Four. Ooh. Four percent reliability. I mean, that's just. They should put something in the algorithm that says if it's lower than 30. Just don't just say, put it up. Just say don't know. Your guess is better than ours. So this shouldn't be relied upon. Ian Projected for a save. Hamilton. They have him for one save. So. Okay. Does everyone get a save in that thing? I think I remember that was a storyline one of the first years we did yeah. this. It's like, uh, kind of, if you're a reliever, you're projected for one save. One wild pitch and one hit by pitch, too. So You're going to have one wild pitch. If you don't, that's like kind of annoying. Right. Um, and like you didn't like play loose enough. That's like the your first swing in the big leagues. you got to take a big hack. So it looks like he is fastball slider. Mostly some sinkers. Batters he's faced. Ryan Kreidler. Ooh. Jonathan Davis. Kreidler just made the Tigers over Zach Short. Wow. Brendan Ooh. Davis. Travis Swaggerty. Mm. Nick Gonzalez. Drew Maggie. Travis Swaggerty again. Oh, Miguel Andujar. Grounded into a double play. Let's go. To Anthony Volpe. Let's go. That was a rhyming situation. Yankees are up 7-0. It was the top of the fifth inning. Boone was getting interviewed. Oh, he's an over-the-top thrower. Mm. Volpe turns it with DJ. It was a night game. It was his fifth pitch of the outing. Little breaker. Oh, they're ruling that a cutter on the Yankees game. He's got to be a lab rat. Matt Blake needs a new project. Uh, oh, Cabrian Hayes mm. lines into a double play. Every name that I've been curious about has hit into a double play. Like that. Oh, my God. The footage of the, oh, off of his foot. God damn, hope he's good. <laughs> Off of whose foot? <laughs> Off of Ian Hamilton's foot. Watch this. Watch. It's just funny that Volpe's pretty good. All right. It looks like we're in Bradenton for Pirate Spring Train. Yeah, 1994 VHS tape quality. Hamilton. Off the foot. High hop. Volpe Fields gets it to second. Was a runner out at first. Oh, caught on a fly? Caught it on a fly. Off his foot, on a fly. Bong. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Ian Hamilton, your game two starter. Matt Chapman. Grounds into a double play. This guy's a double play. This ball. guy Waiting puts a guy on happen. just to get him out. Oh, no so foot. That's good. That's a good scouting report to have. That is great. Matt Chapman's a double play guy. So when they're going to bring him. walks the first batter, just know the two balls coming. Yeah. Trey Sweeney, uh, double play. Shortstop Trey Sweeney to second baseman. Jesus Bast- Batista. Oh, To yes. first baseman, Andres Bastidas. Chaparro. That's the future. Sweeney, Bastidas, Chaparro. Damn. Let's see if there's any other names I'm interested in. Cedric Mullins walked. That's fine. Double Adley play. Rushman strikes out. Oh my God. In this outing, is this true? 
in this outing, I think StatCast didn't update their numbers. Because if we had a three-pitch inning for me and Hamilton in spring... Mm, that's enough for you to get him on the team. And no, and no one put it in loud enough on my radar. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search three. I think, I think it didn't register. Okay. Because that would be nuts. Three-pitch inning. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Anything else, Jake? I think we're good. I think that's all. I'm excited for opening day and start talking about actual results. Yeah. It's coming soon. See you, see you guys Thursday. Right? Thursday morning, we'll react to the like official, official roster. So, our guy Ian. We'll map out the whole season and, uh, Thursday. And we'll, and we'll get, get hype. hype. I think we'll map out the whole hype season. Hype it, baby. We'll map out the whole season. Who starts every game? Hmm. Bullpen usage the entire season. Coming next Thursday. Go Yankees. 50 wins. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. You should then email that to Boom. I mapped, hey, I I mapped, mapped it out. Yeah. The entire yeah. year. We ran the numbers. Read all the books. It's like, I did this back in 2018, and Andrew got hurt on the third day. Drury. <laughs> <laughs>